everyone, I'm Pansy, and if you're new to the Valorant competitive scene, here's some lingo to get you up to speed. So, let's get started. Crossfire. Two or more players holding a common angle, but from different directions. This way, when an opponent peeks, he is being shot simultaneously in his front, back, or side. Crosshair placement. Keeping the crosshair on a proper level and distance from the angle they're holding. So when an opponent peeks, he is putting himself perfectly into your static position. Crosshair placement is the most crucial skill in Valorant. Bait. Using a teammate or utility to capitalize on their death or distraction, a tactic many players try to <coughs> master. Lurk or lurking is when a player slightly separates from the rest of the team, with the goal to maintain control of the map and potentially killing any players while rotating. Hello, welcome back. Today I'm replacing Mitch on the Weatherman stand. So I'm gonna bring you a very different round where I've seen with Mitch. It's a round 11 between FPX and No Panky, which is a perfect example of how to use ultimates because we had actually five of them used in one round, which is not something we see often. Um, this is basically a, a very basic setup by FPX when it comes to the attack. We have C default on every single line. We have players basically on long, on market, on a short and also on showers. So basically almost every line is covered when it comes to making an attack or trying to defend a push from the defenders. And because of that, we have a small difference now when people will rotate. And you can see, you can see here, let's zoom in on the map. Viper making a move already. Angel is trying to move his way up to the back. And this is gonna be met by a different play by um, No Panky. So what I wanted to show you here, and this is crucial information for everyone playing Sova. It's a basic, basic thing what you can do. We have seen the owl being played, which gathers information from Garden, from Long C, uh, from Long B as well, and then goes straight into the teleporter, which gives information that this this round we see Angel rotating to A. This can initiate already a rotation because Angel was always playing on default on the Long side of B, but it doesn't trigger yet the rotation for the entire team, as we see that still um, No Panky are holding their stand now. Because of the default position from from FPX, we also see default stand on the A side. Now this is this is interesting because of the wall of Viper that we have here. Uh, we see CNET just standing on the truck. Typically, he would just stand on the lamps instead, but he knows that the wall from Viper will just not allow him to get a good information on A short. So now this is the crucial moment of the round because we're gonna see the first ultimate being popped. What's going to happen is we're going to see the race push laps with the ultimate, which changes the dynamic of the entire round. This triggers few waterfall eff effects on the entire round. First of all, the moment we see a ult being popped by race, the entire rotation from No Penki starts to happen. So we see already players from B rotating to A. What is also important, Cnet realizes that he cannot basically hold this line. He would have to kill the race before he gets popped by the ultimate. He needs to fall back to CT. And this is going to be very interesting. Basically, um, basically what's going to happen, we're going to see uh, Cnet falling back. But lead, that leaves Yasmund in a very awkward position that's going to be met with players coming from showers. He's basically left to be eaten by the wolves. Let's take a look how this pans out. And now this is the moment where another ultimate was gonna pop out. We're gonna see Angel that's gonna go and take control of the entire side with his ultimate from Viper. Now this is gonna be also crucial because that, that is a double-edged uh, double sword. Gonna wait for the moment. This is still pre-planned. Now we see actually six ultimate being used by Zeke from Nolpenki, which pushes Meadow off the side, delays the plant. In the meantime, Angel is putting the entire ultimate from um, for the side, which will cover Heaven as well. There will be no line of sight, basically uh, for um, for Nolpenki, and that will allow Jet coming from CT 
kind of take control of this side and try to get uh, an angle on Angel, which will happen because Angel will not be able to be in this uh, uh, in his own ultimate. And this is going to be an interesting another moment when you can see right here. This is the moment where Angel tries to see if someone is in lamps, which is being controlled, by the way, by uh, FPX and is going to fall to his demise because he's going to get shot in the back. Now, that will trigger another mo uh, another rotation because now FPX realized they still didn't plant. They have time to rotate to B. And this is going to be a very tough choice because now they're going to rotate with the teleporter, go straight to B and try to plant the bomb. But that will trigger another ultimate from Omen. And this is... This is another crucial moment for uh, for the teams because Zipan already hears Oman is being teleported in the back of B-side. Um, and because of that, he's going to try to push the Omen and change his positioning. In the meantime, players from Nolpenki still on A-side will try to get information from their own Omen if the bomb is being planted or is it another fake. Now, when Omen hears that he's being pushed on lamps, he's getting back on this uh, uh, on the on the CT and tries to get a better position for the retake because he was not fast enough with his ultimate to get control of the site. Now, this will trigger another action, <laughs> and this is going to be when it starts really interesting. Now, we can see another ult being popped by Meadow. He uses his lockdown on site, which will push the Omen out of CT and try to get back um, and try to get enough time for the plant to be safe without anyone holding actually the site for him. So we see Zippen being in the elbow right now. We see a shower rotating all the way from showers to long B. And that will be also something that uh, that's going to be very crucial to, for this round because it allows to set up a crossfire for the elbow and default plant position. Now, because of the ultimate from Killjoy, it delays the plant by, um, sorry, the, the retake by 12 seconds. Now we can see all three players from Noel Panky going into the side. They smoke off uh, window B, which will be most likely the position for Shao, which would rotate from A, but they don't know that Shao is actually on the long um, trying to get a crossfire on them. And this is a basic crossfire, allows everyone to be in a clear, because if Shao would have been in the window right now, he wouldn't be able to see um, the bomb because of the smoke, but also he would have been exposed to the anger from CT and he wouldn't have an easy crossfire with the rest of his team. And I guess that's it. Let's well, go back to the AD. Thank you very much, Alotha. You know, a lot of the things I picked up from what you were saying is individual brilliance. And I think that was one of the games that really showed off individual brilliance from both FPX and Nolpenki. You know, the way that Nolpenki were able to get back into the game and take so much momentum. Um, Hi, Poker, yes, I'm going to aim this question to you. Is that, could they have done it? if they had maybe more individual brilliance than FPX? I mean, the only thing that really broke that seven round win streak was Angel in kind of an unorthodox way with a judge in that round, True. which was kind of just, it was messy. Um, but uh, one thing I do want to say that that kind of lock the uh, Noel Penke were able to put FPX in was kind of that over-reliance on that setup around the utility. I mean, on the flip side of that, Noel Penke's weak spot on defense, if you like, was actually the, the willingness to kind of just rely on somebody to pop off, you know, rely on... A, Seen Ed Vac or whoever it was in whatever round. Uh, FBX, obviously, again, that discipline really came through. They, they were willing to kind of give up front of site control, um, allow the win. Uh, Nopenki actually converted that time and time again. That was that was the main issue and, and what they really put into effect on attack. Mm, Lothar, who stood out to you in that game? Angel, 100%. Yeah. His yeah. Per personal, like, you know, just showing up with the aim on point on the double kill on long B, that was actually one situation yeah. where... He was known for taking control of long B on attack every single round, which is very important. And he was also using snake bite every single round to push out um, Vac from getting the orb. And in the one crucial round when he knew that Vac is on five charges on his ultimate and he's going to definitely go for the orb, he was waiting for that. He probably pinged his point on the map to know where the yeah, orb is yeah. and just sprayed through that through that smoke to get a kill. That was actually very impressive and it was like reading into what my opponent will do and he just was setting him his opponent perfectly for that. Just just on that though as well, and I keep talking about discipline with FBX, a really good example again is Angel making that play on long and then two players swing out hooker, Zipan, the young prodigy for this team again, love seeing him, but just that small bit, he comes to reload and Zipan's there ready and waiting to obviously secure that final kill, I mean ultimately back up Angel and it's, it comes down to time. But that's the sort of thing that Angel brings to the table. He, he's kind of, I don't want to say disciplining the guys, but getting them in line in, in terms of really, really good uh, working practices in-game.
Oh, yeah, I firmly believe that FPX and Angel are pretty much synonymous. I know he has a lot of the say. Uh, of course, a lot of the, the strategies come from him. Um, everyone knows him for his brain, but I'm very, very impressed with him as well today, being able to actually show up and being reliable. I think time after time, every single player on FPX have the ability to just be reliable because yeah. if Zipan's in a clutch, he's going to do it for you. If Xiao's in a clutch, he's going to do it for you. And if Angel's in a clutch, he's going to do it for you. And it's really, really scary. Uh, I know they're 1-0 up. It wasn't a perfect game and we are heading to split. And I believe uh, Agent Select is going on now, as you guys can see on your screen. Anything that stands out to you guys so far? Well, I mean, I, I know only three of them have selected their agent so far. <laughs> I but... mean, Shao coming back to the stage. This is yeah. something we saw kind of way back with uh, FBX. So it's, it's nice to see Sage get a bit of play time again. Um, no real surprises elsewhere. Mado coming back over to the side from obviously the, the slight variation with Killjoy on bind. Um, and Angel going on to the Omen. Mm, I mean, Shao Sage, uh, he, he does a lot of damage with that Sage. He is Battle Sage as well. And I do remember in, in, in Epic Land, the last time they played Summon FC, actually, Shao's uh, Sage was absolutely insane. I think he dropped 30 bomb in that best of three. <laughs> so this is pretty interesting. Uh, and of course, um, we've got Jet back on the Nopenki side too. Uh, what do you guys, how do you feel about this next map? Do you think maybe if they play the way they did on Vine? but perhaps they can roll their momentum a bit further. Uh, we can see a game, uh, map three even. Well, I'm looking here at Nolpenki when it comes to performance from Zeke. You know, he's now changing from Sova to Raze, because on Split, basically, no one wants to play Sova. It's, you know, it's still a very good character, but there are better characters at doing the job properly on this map because of the uh, shorter angles or many angles that Sova can't clear, an example. And Raze with a Boombot here deals a huge amount of damage, also scouts, gets the mobility out, so Zeke is typically uh, wrecking havoc, to be honest. In the last qualifying match um, against Enterprise, he actually dropped a 30 bomb, if I'm not mistaken, on his race, on split, so I'm looking forward if he's able to be the catalyst for, mm. for Noel Panky to get that aggressive side going. I mean, he's going to be going up against your boy Zipan, Hypog. Uh, do you have faith in that Zipan might come out as the better race today? Uh. I have absolute faith, yes. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I do think, you know, in terms of map picks, this one does kind of favor Noel Penke a lot heavier than Bind. But I don't think against FPX that's going to be an issue. Um, I, I think they're going to be well poised. And again, you know, with Xiao, uh, they've definitely got, obviously got the strategy behind that agent pick. And even just something like that, a slight variation can catch a team off guard. It can, you know, they've got to throw three rounds at it to try and figure out that setup and how to break it, how to crack through. And again, assuming he's going to be playing that, that B-Heaven uh, male position. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this one might be a little explosive, but mm. I still got FPX taking this. Well, speaking of explosive, we do have a joke on the caster desk. No, Penky have to win this if they want to stay at, in first strike main event. Uh, Mitch and Jonas, I'll pass this on to you. Thank you very much, Ian Sue. Appreciate it. Great insights from the analyst desk as always. We are back here, ready to roll with the game in just a short amount of time. Before that though, Jonas, I heard you've got something to say to the viewers at home. <laughs> oh yeah, so you know, in case we have some Norwegians watching here, you know, my, my granddad, if I was ever going to do something on like the soccer field or anything like that, he always gave me these wise words in this beautiful mountain language that is Norwegian. He said, no maru yagu paisa pau. All right, yep. so for all y'all mountain men out there, you know what he just said. <laughs> I haven't got a clue, but I do have a clue about this game here. <laughs> FBX versus Null Banky. One to zero advantage to FBX as we come into map number two. It is split, and as Zipan said on Twitter, they almost threw the previous one. Well, they're not looking to throw this one away, not by any means. This is the series we were hoping for. A 13 Absolutely. to 10, one hell of a close game. Yeah. Now, Penke pushed them all the way after a terrible first half. So far, though, it has been the attacking sides that have thrived. Will we see the same here on Split? That's a good question. Another question is how many times can we make a pun about the name Split? Time will tell. Maybe some split decisions see, in there. Uh, well, listen, listen, listen. We, I would love to do that all day long, but I've heard some audience love it, some of the audience hate it. And in other words, they're very split. Oh, the my God. <laughs> he did it. Okay, so that's two. We're on two. Yeah, Twitch chat, you got to keep track. But here we go. FBX. <laughs> they're actually very spread out, shall I say. Don't want to make too many all at once. <laughs> because 
they're looking for cipher control outside of A. I like this. Your cam setup. You've got a tripwire to engage on if they do push forward. This actually, this cam will usually indicate that it's going to be a, a little bit of an info play on A and a heavy rotate to B. Surprisingly, Nalpengi have four stacked the A site. Maybe they've read into this somewhat, uh, certainly misreading the information if that's the case. And look how different they're playing compared to when we saw G2 versus Orglis on, on uh, Split yesterday. It would probably be 4-0 by now already to the attacking team. So it's just very interesting to see how different, and they're also giving up middle. They just have a tripwire, and they completely gave up middle. Now you see four people rotating to B. Jets also actually holding A heaven, and literally Meadow's just having a lovely cam session by himself in the corner. It's like Null Penky are playing a game of roulette. They're just gambling away. They haven't yeah. pushed anything. They haven't got information, but they're stacking up based off of nothing by the looks of it. One for one trades as the B site falls. The spike does make it up through mid. The Sage Wall being used very well. On pistol rounds, it's oh. difficult to take it down, but then they have nothing to cover off. Spawn, this is so messy from FPX. Eventually, a smoke comes down, but it's too little too late. Spike is dropped, big play needed. Headshot connected by Angel. Meadows in a 1v3. It's winnable, 15 seconds. Three players all low, but they know where he is. Out goes the stun. He's got to be quick, and he's quick to die as Nolpenki take the first round here, one to zero on split. So this is the more traditional type of split gameplay that we've seen in the past metas before the Cypher and the Killjoy changes, where you have you have a Cypher lurking in A main, you have a lot of going back and forth before you decide to push a site, and seconds. there are many uh, like pros and cons about this, but one of the problems with this is, of course, the time. Because you're definitely going to have a lot less time with this kind of strategy, and that sometimes forces out a play that is sub-ideal because you're waiting out all the utility from the enemy team. So that's probably why this was so hard for FBX, and this is probably going to be a more typical defender-sided matchup than when we saw G2 and Orglis play against each other. At least that's what I think right now. Okay, well, we can always change our minds as time goes on. It's the beautiful part of being on the casting desk. We don't have to stick to our predictions, but the analysts, they make the call at the start, and they've just got to sit it out, ride it out all the way. That's what happened to us earlier on Bind, where Purple Cobras <laughs> didn't quite deliver as much as we were hoping from them, although I think you can very much just lead that to being a massive compliment for some NFC. Right here, though, we are having some technical issues over on the Null Penky side, as we said before. This is the downside of being online, but the upside is safety, and I think that has to come first. So for Null Penky, they're trying to fix whatever issues they're currently facing. Luckily, I see all players on the server, and I've seen them all moving, so it's not like we'll have to restart the lobby. Which and luckily, we both love to hear our own voice, so there's no problem in giving us some extra time to have a little chit-chat, is there? Absolutely. I mean, I always see the spam, you know, caster start game, Caster, why pause? You know, actually, there's no technical issue. I just wanted to talk some more. I'm afraid <laughs> this one will be quick and figured, you know what? I think we need to bring some insights to the game. All jokes aside, though, it, it does, does actually kind of suck when it happens Absolutely. one round in. Uh, you know, if yeah. it's halfway, if we're like already have a lot to talk about, but obviously not a whole bunch has happened at this point. All we've seen is the pistol. What we can talk about is what we'll typically see coming out of these players then afterwards. You talk about a second round. On the defensive side, it's easier to play with those classics you can try to isolate those closer fights as yeah. they push to you well, when you come down to the attacking side you lose the pistol what are you seeing you seeing full ecos for the most part or maybe a couple four spies here and there so one of the problems with split is how heavily you need to use utility to defend a site and break into a site. So I think one of the main main issues here is that it's not necessarily a typical map where you would do a half buy if it hurts your utility in the round after, because you have two types of half buys. You have the kind of half buy where you save enough money to buy both weapons and utility for the next round, yeah. and then you have the more common semi buy, which is the one where you just have enough to get 3,900 credits next round to buy full armor and a Vandal or Phantom. Now it's still really hard to push a site on split with just a Vandal and a Phantom without without any of the utility this team has. So you can use nades to clear out a corner, you can use flashes, all these kind of things. And it's just going to be really difficult to just brute force your way in just with aim. I have to ask, actually, is that this is something, for those of you that don't know, Jonas here is probably the biggest brain Sova player out there. <laughs> he thinks of lineups for absolutely everything. I plugged this Discord earlier on. Oh, Chuck the link. <laughs> <laughs> Disco.gg slash Average Jonas. There you go. <clears throat> uh, and in all seriousness, though, you'll actually find some insane tips on there. I've I've used a lot to learn. Can't use them efficiently. I get caught looking at the ground and killed. But the reality <laughs> is, you know, these um, 
I, I wonder, I wanted to pick your brains a little bit, because um, obviously you've coached some players uh, yeah. into playing Sova and how they should do it. And on Split, to me, it would be one of the harder maps to actually develop these lineups because there's so much height and the positions that I think you're typically in, yeah. they give you, like, for example, in Heaven, they'll give you verticality, sure, but yeah. not really any angle to line up those darts on. Have so you found it more difficult? Uh, so one of the things you can dive into when playing Sova and Split is the fact that the Recon Dart is such a massive asset to a team. It's a 30-second cooldown free utility that can give you so much information. Now the problem with the way Split is built, and this is the same for a site and Icebox, is that the Recon Dart can't really get a big area scanned because of all the corners. So this is why normally you don't use Sova on Split, because Shock Dart-wise, Sova is great on split because with a shock dart, you actually enjoy the angles because those just gives you more possibilities to hit the default plant. Like, I can hit the default plant almost from anywhere on the map on split. and But then again, I'm probably only players stupid enough to play Sova on split. <laughs> so you don't see that in that's pro play, big, and that's why I'm a caster, apparently, and they are pro <laughs> players. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, maybe if you found yourself on a lineup as a standard in the future, they could slot you in whenever they need a Sova. And actually, there's an interesting point. I know we're about to get back into the game. I wanted to bring it up. Ah, it's an eco round for FPX. Let's go for it. Over in Asia, I've been doing a lot of Southeast <laughs> Asia tournaments alongside of you. And one thing I noticed when I was over there, we were confronted with these team lineup graphics and it was next to impossible to get info on some of these teams so it, yeah. these on broadcast would sometimes be the first time we'd see them which is a terrible feeling they would come up and you'd be like oh here's the five players and i'm not even joking one of the teams had nine players on the lineup now i thought someone's messed up in production they put their whole family in but what's <laughs> actually happened was they had this they had it everyone for a different agent and yeah. for different maps like so someone would be good on split with uh with a raise let's say and someone else on haven with the raise it was so bizarre and yet i start to think you know six new agents every year maybe that's something that we will see Absolutely, and I, I'm going to answer you in a second as the push is about to come in. Only 50 seconds left on the clock. Angel pushes out with the smoke here, shoots the, the tripwire as well. He pushes in, but he's already got 21 HP left and he's stunned by Breach. It's not a nice situation to be in. Zeke is just chilling inside the smoke here, waiting for the smoke to go out, but Meadow actually gets him with the classic. It was literally a three versus one duel as Cena takes out Angel as well. This left. is actually surprisingly close for an Ikaron, but only 30 seconds left on the clock and they need to plant. They're trying to rotate here through Events, hopefully finding something, maybe finding an open bomb site. But Omen and Cypher already smelled the bait. There is a tripwire there. All the info comes out. They have not got much time left as they're just playing this from side okay. perfectly. Oh my Great god. Nade. That pushed Aaron out and split these players up. Oh, oh well, that's just wrecked him. So Jasmine just picks up a 4K. And it's one of those situations where. 4Ks are sick, but when they've got no armor, when they're desperate for time, they're rushing the site, not knowing you're there, yeah, you're going to get a 4K. If you don't get a 4K, it's almost yeah. embarrassing. And now to kind of split our brains a little bit, let's go That's back four, to four, because I hit one of that <laughs> round. Well. Uh, back to your question. This is something coming from Overwatch. This is something I've seen a lot because they would have a few niche players who would literally play just one or two characters, but they would be so good on that specific character that they were worth just having in the team and on a full salary and everything. I imagine then when organizations saw this game come out and then they heard six new agents a year, they just looked at their bank accounts and went, oh, <laughs> God damn it. Not another <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm going to have to sign so many players. <laughs> like, this is a nice oh little bit of my God, Angel. Angel. He loves doing this, gets shut down afterwards. Oh, spray <laughs> from Shadow connects to Zeke. A great round. And for Angel, that's something I've seen so many times. Smoke left often paranoia in towards ropes as well, and then just rush it down. The fact that somebody tried to challenge on him without a ropes trade there immediately is a little bit worrying to me. You want to be fighting mid together, sure. On iteration one of Split, when there was a wall there and ropes wasn't as e easy to peek from, yeah. I'll accept it. But now, in these days, that is a, a two-man peek if you're going to go that aggressive. And they decided against it, at least from those two different alternate angles. And we have a four versus two situation here. This might be the first round for FPX. And they're in on the bomb side, ready to plant. Sage is, is puts up a wall, but they're actually doing this. This is pretty clever. They waited for Shadow to get into position. So he's actually using the Sage wall for a weird well, angle. It doesn't really work this time. As Zip and of course, as we see before, these insane trades. Every time, FPX always has a guy in the right spot to do a refrag. And now we 
we have the postman situation, one versus two. This man needs to solve it all. You talk about FPX in the right positions. Look at Meadow coming in through heaven, but if oh! goes down, it could have been dangerous. Never mind, because he gets dealt with right away. You know, that's one of those situations. I I love it when players split up like that, but <laughs> I hate it when it doesn't work. Because it look, if one of you dies, then you're in a little bit of a bind, and it can be hard to really ascend out of that pit. <laughs> but you know what? It's okay, because things you know were what? hot here. <laughs> They're melting the ice box, that's for sure. And the ice wall didn't even get tight time to break and it looks like for fbx at least they're on the stairway to haven <laughs> excuse me you make one more pun i'm splitting all five baby <laughs> all five <laughs> you don't want to know how many times i practiced that in the mirror oh i bet i bet i've seen your notes sir <laughs> as you have seen mine <laughs> see more than your notes <laughs> I've seen your outfits and they're amazing. I can't wait to see the next two days of oh what you're going to be pulling out God. when those jackets come in. Spoiler Woo. alert. But what I like there, so the Jet's actually the player that's peeking up. CNED went for aggression down B tunnel. Then a slow orb comes in from Xiao and Nade, the paint shells from Zipan. So because it's CNED that's there, he can dash out. He doesn't actually get slowed by the slow orb, which is, well, he does, but then he dashes to cancel it out. So that's perfect to avoid what could have been a very embarrassing paint shell death. And now you see Noel Panky on the back foot here. Very low economy, playing it super safe. Of course they want to play the close angles here. There's no need to peek on a long range when you have a pea shooter. Of course, Angel is pushing here into vents. It's a good position for Breach to be in. Oh my god, oh, it's playing freaking whack-a-mole here. That's so close. What's going on? The stun comes out. Angel is stunned. If they're pushing, this can be perfect. Ah! But he still gets it. What's going on? Oh, no. He turns around to flash, but he gets killed by Aaron. The refrag comes out. This is insane. What's going on? Zeke actually takes out Sivan as well. It's three versus three. Third 30 seconds 30 left seconds on the clock. Left. They need to get something done here as Sage just gets killed while she's trying to climb the rope. Oh. What's going on? <laughs> what kind of eco round is this? Oh my god. So it's all down to Meadow with a Vandal in hand. One victim already spotted. He knows exactly where Raze is as well. Oh but god. even if he got that kill, Aaron was coming from above to deliver death. That is a beautiful round by Null Panky. They talked about on the desk how this is a map that looks more sided towards Null Panky. Well, in this round right here, you saw how well they manipulated some of these angles. And the fact that Aaron didn't go up the rope at the same time actually ended up netting them yeah. a success because Angel wanted to paranoia up into heaven to help his teammates out and ultimately that cost him his life. Yeah, and that was just that was really well played by Nal Panky. They knew they were they had really low firepower. There was no need to wait on an angle where they had a disadvantage. They played it so well, refrags with the classic. That was just beautiful to watch, honestly. Everything about it so well played and for Nal Panky, this is their opportunity to build on it a little Ooh. bit further, but CNED, he's been taken down. A sheriff got right up close Angel's Revenge as he looks for a little bit more, leading the charge. The entry fragger now picks up the operator. It's in his hands and he's looking for a victim. Jasmine has oh. managed to sneak on into B main with those cages. He pops the ultimate, now going to get the info to play with back, swinging out wide, catches Angel on the operator, and Jasmine in on the alternate angle. Completely paranoid up, Meadows only got a stinger, and on this range, there's no way he wins the fights as Jasmine connects a quick headshot to close that one and put four on the board for Null Panky still good damage done by FPX considering their investment. Yeah, and you know what? Having a really strong Cypher player on split just makes such a difference. If your Cypher is having a field game, you're just going to get so much information. And he played this so well, the way he identified that they pushed through middle and he just chose to take a very weird offensive angle into B main to make sure that he wasn't sandwiched, that was just very smart played by him. Yeah, extra map control, the name of the game. Now, I want to just address what I said. It wasn't actually that great from FPX. Their money was where I thought it was. So without the credits to invest into this round, that was actually a heavy gamble on the previous, leaving them in a position now with three sheriffs, a ghost, and a frenzy. Not ideal by any means. And with that, you're probably looking at five rounds for Null Panky, almost immediately answering the question of would these maps continue to be attacker-sided based on what we had seen so far in this tournament? Evidently, the answer is no. 
<laughs> True. And this is also just down to playstyle on different teams. As seen it, it's just paranoid here as he gets pushed out by FBX. It's such a powerful a push here. And the second time, he just gets entry fragged by a sheriff headshot. He must have a real headache right now. What's going on? The Sage Wolf comes out. Shadow's on top of the wall. They did not expect it. But Vac refrags him. This is so close. Three versus two. Zeke and Vac has almost zero HP. Vac is you just trying to find... As Shao gets the rest out on Shadow, this is very much winnable. As the breach all comes as well. This is a freaking play field right now. Vax gets Shao, Zeke gets Shadow. And just like that, another round goes to Null Panky. Five to one. I like Zeke's repositioning as well. He came up through heaven to catch those kills from behind, dodging out on the rolling thunder. But this man here, he is getting absolutely <laughs> wrecked by pistols twice in a row now. We have seen those pushes, those players on sheriffs get up close to him and eliminate him uh, from a meter away. I just want to do a quick, some quick math again. Uh, the so far, CNED has uh, lost 12,000 credits to 1,600 credits in those two rounds. Just wanted to put that out there. Not ideal. They did manage to save the operator both times, though. That's the upside, I suppose. But yeah, it, in terms of opening duels, that's not a good trade. Not no. a good percentage at all to have to save those weapons because of it. That's when you're not going to like, if a stockbroker comes to you with those numbers, you say no. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling my portfolio, buddy. For <laughs> Angel, again, moving in towards ropes, they ha he hasn't actually burned that much utility. There was a smoke oh, down, but he maintained his paranoia because he had two teammates with him, more specifically, I suppose, Shadow, to grab those trades. I don't like Xiao going up there alone. The breach ult came out here, but it didn't really give them that much as... as Oh, actually, you have Omen in the backside, but Vac finds him. Shadow and Shao gets yeah, refrags here. Three I versus three, exactly 50 seconds left on the clock. Are. This looks very much like an ideal situation for the attacking team right now. Shadow gets up seen as well. The Sage Wall is up. Of course, Jet tried to make a little tricky play here. It didn't really work for him that well. He's not really had the greatest time seen for these last rounds as Race tries to find something here. Beautiful peek there by Zeke. Two versus two, nice little Zeke peek. Oh my god, this is so close. Oh! Oh, he missed it. He forced him into the panic ultimate, leaving Zeke down on a little bit of low HP. So is Xiao, but Xiao can always heal up, or at least in a little bit. He can, no, he can't, because he popped it onto Shadow a second ago. Either way, Zeke swung on, and I like the fact there that you've got Meadow and Xiao both swinging at the same time on the same angle. So one of them should be able to get the trade Absolutely. if they don't connect the kill straight away. And we've seen this so many times, even though we've just seen this for one map, you've seen FBX probably do this eight, nine, ten times where they're playing, like, their body system is working so well. Well, they always have someone else holding the correct angle. They're always playing these refrags and pl this thing that you call playing on contact. For those who haven't seen CS that much, it's basically how one of you are definitely going to be the first to fire and the other one peaks as soon as the first player gets contact. And that way you almost are guaranteed oh. to get a refrag. So big there. The wall goes up to give Zipan the height to get into heaven on double blast packs. They shouldn't expect it this early on. CNET, I feel like he's going to get unlucky again. That smoke's actually deterring him from pushing forward as they lose control of the site. FBX now have that, and they're going to go in for the plants. Nice and safe. Can't be peeked from any of these angles. They're covering the walkout into elbow. But for Null Panky, they're under threat because Shadow, well, he popped a flash. He's going to put the fault line down as well and start to reposition Jet taken down so quickly. Angel faster than the dash. And you see Gandalf and Frodo at it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep... As soon as I see Angel and Zippin fragging it out together, I'm just going to keep making that reference. I'll be honest, I've heard Gandalf and Frodo used to describe me and my casting partner too many <laughs> times, and I don't have a long beard. That's the sad part. <laughs> Oh my god, no, well that was very well executed and you see here with the, with, with the way these teams play, it's really hard to give up the bomb site like that, but that's what happened, you know, they managed to get into the site very comfortably and set up a nice post-plant playstyle. It's just so amazing to see and now we're at 3-5 and, and considering this is oh, probably, oh my god, what's this happening? Is huge. So they've, they've actually smoked off over towards the B side of mid for that dash down so Cena could get aggressive control. He had to dash because Cena, um, because Xiao, excuse me, put down the slow orb that then forced him to play if he wanted to play fast as they'd planned to go for the dash that leaves him isolated and unable to take the fights with a teammate really smart play by Xiao as FBX regained control of middle now with the man advantage but look at this oh the stack up on the left God. you can never expect this kind of a play Noel Penke 
They've got three players up towards Heaven B. Two are spotted. Here comes the third on the exactly swing through. They're all going in for the fights with the weaker weapons. This is exactly what you want to do. And the advantage now has been pulled back. And this is what we see so much. They play utility so well. It's only 50 seconds left and they need to get the bomb planted soon. It's four versus four. The utility is starting to lack as they're trying to rotate here and get a plant on A side instead. Sage is coming in late with the bomb here. They need to hurry up as the rotates come and the information comes out. They know they're going to go here. They don't really have time to focus on the other bomb side as Aaron gets a pick here, does he? Oh my god, it's so close. What's going on here? 27 seconds. Sippens gets a double kill. Vac is the only remaining player on the defending team. The plant goes down and suddenly Vac has one hell of a mission to turn this around. He's going to look for the fight, but oh. look at those angles. So you've got Shadow down below and Zipan up above on the same angle. The verticality yep. makes it next to impossible to, first of all, get a kill, but then definitely to trade it. You'd have to spray control. They'd have to whiff. It's just not going to happen, especially when it's these two players on the other side. But I did really like the innovation to go for that three-man stack after yep. the early aggression down middle, knowing FPX would go for the mid control. It just didn't quite pan out this time. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to worry now for No Panky because like hopefully for them it could be that suddenly this map is now attacker sided, but with these playstyles are so different compared to the the other ones. Also, what the heck? He doesn't check his life. That's the artist boost. We've seen him do it so many times in ignition series events, but right here in first strike, the first time I've seen it, it doesn't work for young Zeke. Cena drops in the early round as well. And when you've got pistols, when you've got the likes of your stingers, that's where you make those kind of plays. But he just didn't check the right corner, unfortunately. And I would say left corner, it's not common the players actually hide in there. If they're going to hide, it's towards the, the big dumpster on the right, either yeah. up in the corner or down behind it. So it is an angle that I can definitely forgive not being checked. And that's also actually a theory I have that I think that for a lot of, as this probably is, the, yeah, there we go. I, I have a theory that for a lot of players, it's easier to aim to the left as that was, uh, by the way, a prime gaming flawless. <laughs> but as I said, so I have a theory that aiming outwards to the right is harder for you as a player than inwards. At least this is how it feels for I me. Agree. So it's just something about your body movement inwards making it easier. Oh. So, so uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, what we saw there was the paranoia coming down. Now again, that is, as I said, that's the G2, right? That's the artist play, double blast packs through. You've got your, uh, I think it's Pad Attack who's behind, popping that paranoia. Yeah. They try it here, but even though the player is blind, he could just about see the leg and hit the shot so quickly. Yeah, because the paranoia still has some delay, so it's kind of hard to like, time it perfectly and even then if you see where the shots are coming from you can still see and this is actually something I wanted to mention FPX are playing five actually four vandals right now and the vandal shots can be seen through smokes but phantoms cannot be seen through smoke so this is something that's really important when you start pre-firing through a smoke yeah. that people can see your your shots if it's a vandal and when enemies are paranoid up as well but I, oh, oh okay hold on angel so he loves to play those sneaky plays so we saw them get punished for it quite a bit whenever teams have read it oh, and in this case me. i'm surprised no panky have played nothing in middle but well, the reason you're seeing angel go for that is because of the lack of mid presence but with no backup because he was trying to be sneaky they oh. end up losing their smoker shao able to pick up one though here comes the wall in towards the spawn the ultimate popped as well the showstopper look into the back of the site. This should oh be it. My God. Got it no! for that player, but it's a trade. Zeke does well to at least get one out of it. They need to smoke off the cross, but hey, they don't have a smoke. They don't left. have a wall. So Aaron's able to take that fight alongside his teammate Vac and try to really harass them on the cross. Left down to a 2v2 oh, shadow. In with shadow! The and double comes out of it. Gets back outside the cloud burst. And now it's all down to Vac. He's an animal, a beast. Oh. But it's not going to work this time as Meadow shuts him down. And six are now on the board for FPX. Last what a round. The they tried to play that retake with three players in CT spawn, and it's such a narrow space. It's so, like, if you're spraying through a smoke there, it's so likely that you can actually get hit by a collat like this. So it was just, the jet smoke was there, but still he just pre-fired through the smoke, and he got two. That's just super unfortunate. But I think in a situation like that, if you have, you, you still have some time, right? You could have one rotating up to heaven and take some attention away from uh, from CT spawns so it's easier to push out
Yeah, I think as well, though, because that spike plant was going down, you realize in those moments, we're all here. We effectively have a three versus one fight, right, for a half a second or upwards of that. Yep. So there is a good chance that you can actually win that fight. Absolutely. Fortunately, the chance was not there for you this time because Shadow turned up. This time, Angel goes down in the early round yet again, but he's able to find you one frag. He gets rezzed up as well because Xiao had his ultimate online. They're trying to tap him away, but he's got the cover. The shots don't land. Here comes the rolling thunder back. Oh, this he's can be huge. He's completely screwed. Angel catches him out, getting his revenge, not quite from the grave. Aaron is caught on the backside. They know he's here. The nade doing damage. Xiao takes him down, and it's all up to these final two players, Jesmond and CNET. A two, a 1v5, and a none v5 as Angel <laughs> closes it out. 7-5 to five at the halftime, and actually... The attacker Switching side does sides. win out the half. Yeah, but let's see if the, yeah. Let's just hold on to our thoughts for a bit. <laughs> I know you want to say it, but let's just wait and see. One thing I did really like there was the way, as soon as the info came out, uh, Aaron TP'd to the backside to help his teammate out. Of course, that kind of just left him in this home alone position. And that was like, he was literally just bullied. He smoked himself <laughs> off trying trying to stall as much as he could. But I think that uh, it's still a really good play, I think, to help his friend out like that instead of just leaving him alone. Because of course, yeah. he was super stuck on site there. Absolutely. It just comes down to the timing, right? He gets in there the second a Rolling Thunder comes into play. Yeah, it could have gone both ways, basically. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely could have. But the Rolling Thunder was perfectly yeah. played by Shadow, they nade went down from zip band. There were players spamming him from every angle. It, it was a lose lose situation. Oh, here come two cypher cages. Shao baiting them out into the open. He's whoa, actually able to slow them, pop up his wall as well. His support isn't there. It comes around eventually, but that confidence on Shao to just go for it. I know the slow orb was there, but they could have gotten into position in time to challenge him. Absolutely, and we see here they're lurking inside the smoke, starting to knife. This is, might be... Oh my god, he almost gets back through the smoke! Speaking of back, <laughs> <laughs> It was nasty, nasty stuff. Yeah, he's escaping barely, and when FPX had this disadvantage in the pistol, it actually wasn't that bad, because they were able to heal up the other player. Yeah. There's no Sage in play over towards the attacking side of Null Penky, so they just have to deal with Vac being on one health. He'll just use his flashes and uh, yeah. Aftershock to try and support now. Oh my god, Shadow is waiting in such a position! Oh my god, he gets one! Does he get more? He gets two! Oh, but Cena gets the refrag, and finally, hopefully, Cena can get more work done this half, as they have 40 seconds left on the clock. They need to get something done here. They're strong. Starting to rush into B sides here. The funnels are coming in. The omen flashes are coming in. Cena's floating around left. on side. He finally gets the plant down, so they're safe for now. But there is a four versus three retake coming in, and they need to play this really well to win this round. It's a really small detail, but I love the pathing there of Cena to move and actually drift down above, yeah. so he can't be spotted out from the spawn One angel. He managed to paranoia all these oh, players. Man. Caught himself a double and Meadows on the trade. FBX come out on top in that pistol. And that was actually a tough position yeah. because Meadow had utility on the site. And I could see you, you want to get out there. You want to use it to slow down that push. But he decides as the only player towards the B site that instead he will stay passive. He will wait yeah. outside and play with his teammates. And then ultimately, because of the fact that there was a man advantage, Don yeah. Penke felt like they needed to make a play. And the timing was so atrocious that the millisecond Angel put his paranoia was when they were running forward. Yeah, that was just an like extremely aggressive uh, post plant play if you like from the the attacking team and for, unfortunately this time it didn't work one thing i wanted to mention here is that fpx have been really good at shutting down cnet we saw two times the entry frag with the sheriff against the operator he's currently only on three frags as a jet that's not what you want to have from your duelist players that's really unfortunate we mentioned earlier on how when you lose out the pistol for the attacker side it's very important to have utility if you do want to go on in for those second round buys and i guess because of the players that they've got and how cheap they can get some of these smokes for free on Aaron. CNED's obviously got his Cloudburst for just the 300. You've got flashes in play for Vac and the Paranoia for Aaron going down to the Stinger to afford that extra utility. They're confident in going in for this Force Buy and they're not at that much of a disadvantage. The dash in from Jet is huge but CNED actually does get caught. It's a trade as Shadow plays the back of the site waiting patiently. The flash not connecting. The swing through the smoke. Shadow was hoping they'd be blind but they're not and now it's difficult because Angel's just 
just been lit by the right click classic. He TPs back to spawn as Med. Oh, gets headshot. He does deal the damage to Zeke, but in this 2v2, look at the HP. They're all so low. It should be so easy, easy for Jesmond, at least, to close this one out. If they can catch him off guard, that could be the difference maker. Fire Utility. Lighted. Thankfully, we can see it now in these post plans. There's none for FPX to initiate these fights. They have to rely on winning these duels, and really, they have to rely on hitting the shot straight away. Even that won't be enough to take down Jesmond. This should be no pankies. This is just literally, this is an aim labs exercise right now. Literally the first one who hits a headshot here. So, oh my god, he's so close. Jesmond gets Meadow down. Look at Angels at 6 HP and it gets back. What's going on? Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh my god, are you kidding me? How does this he win that? This is terrible news for no Panky. Absolutely terrible news. They just use all their money. They. So what I wanted to mention earlier was that no Pinky, since they planted the bomb and almost everybody on both sides died, it means that no Pinky had 300 extra credits each, which is why they force bought in the first place because they literally had almost the same type of utility. And but but how does this happen? For like they needed a hit one shot, the confidence on Angel's swing. He just goes wide, takes the shots. He was one hit by any weapon. The, the, how he has the balls to do that is beyond me. But oh. he has been a beast this game, 15 kills. We mentioned it on the previous map that he was keeping up with the young guns, now leading yeah. the charge yet again, not on the Viper, but on the Omen. And this is really bad news because that oh, they yes. needed to win. As soon as you force buy in that situation, you need to win that round. Your economy is so hurt right now. This is terrible news for Nolpeng, but hopefully they can get something done here as they have what five sheriffs. So they're going for these aggressive picks as Sipan already takes out CNED and it's already a four versus five. This is starting to look a bit dire, I'd say. I gotta say, man, with FPX winning those kind of rounds, it shows, right? They've got the tactics, but they've got the ability as well. Oh. <laughs> They're showing off the ability. Three kills for Angel. It is a shutdown of a round that you don't expect Null Panky to do anything in. But this is where confidence can also take a big hit. You've lost a round you shouldn't have. Then you get smacked out of this one. If they lose this buy round, it could all be over. And suddenly you have a prime gaming flawless. You do. <laughs> and of course, we actually forgot because we were so carried away by how ridiculous that Red Bull clutch was from Angel in the 1v2. That dude was sick. I guess Spectre, he wins a fight range, one HP. Oh, I'm, I'm going to watch that back tonight many, many times. But I tell you what, no, Eat some Panky ice will cream as well. and just enjoy yourself. You know, exactly. <laughs> For no Panky, though, I feel bad. No Panky and when chill. They, <laughs> hey, when they look back at that and realize how low he was, yeah. their hearts are, you're going to hear their hearts shattered no matter yeah. where you are in the world. Oh, that nade is unfortunate as Angel's already done 36 oh. HP, but Jet doesn't see him. Oh, no, see, now that's so unfortunate. Aaron and Z gets two kills. They're already in the bombs. This looks possibly winnable as Vac gets Angel as well. Only two defenders left as the rotates are coming in. The plant is down. They need to win this round to stay in this game. Oh my god. Especially because it's a bonus round, right? FPX came into this two versus three with two Spectres. The upgrade has gone in from Xiao. He's looking to move in towards the site. I'm surprised Meadow doesn't even move to heaven to get the Phantom, but I suppose it's all down to timing. They want to get in here quickly before these players super reposition. Dodging the flash, Xiao, his teammates actually forced back. Meadow goes in towards the spawn, now pushing oh. out. They know there's players in the back of the site. One is very, very low, but it's a great crossfire from Null Panky. A difficult one to beat. Zeke wins the opening. Meadow's going to do it all with a Spectre in hand, and it's just not possible. Zeke pulling it off with a 3k and putting six on the board for Null Panky. This is still going to be very, very tough, because as I said, that was the bonus round Absolutely. for FPX. Yeah, and for those who don't know, a bonus round is when you you win two rounds in a row, but you don't necessarily buy down everything you have to. You save enough money so that even if you lose this round, you can still buy an extra round. So that's why sometimes you keep your Spectres for, a for an extra round, even if you could afford a Vandal. And that's exactly what FPX did there. So they did a lot of economical damage to the other team by getting pickoffs on players with yeah, higher utility way. and better weapons. Exactly. So they can still buy right now and play a full round. Look at that. That means they're at a weaponry disadvantage, right, in the previous. So you're actually more likely to lose that round than win it. But you know that going in. Your objective is to deal damage to your opponents. Now, in this round right here, pay attention to that little icon above the doorway. That's a one-way cage. What that means is if Meadow pops it, he can stop Come these players from running out, essentially. Because he'll, they won't be able to see a thing while he can see their feet. That yeah. will stop a push. But he has not popped it. 
Instead, they were actually waiting with the fault line to prepare to stun someone to then peek out and take the fight. Really smart play, but Zipan falls, and now this puts the heaven control into question. Absolutely, and they're starting to get a lot of ground here, but they decide to rotate back. After after getting this pick off, they decide not to push on it, which is actually quite smart, because obviously as soon as Zippon gets picked off, this is information to the defending team that possibly a push will come here, and they kind of, it seems like they're trying to bait them here by keeping Cypher in the middle and slowly rotate towards A, and for now they don't have any info as Angel's about to peek. Oh my god, this is just a matter of timing. It had to be left. flying left and right. The, par the paranoia comes oh. in. Oh my god, what a shot! Jasmine is already taken out. Four versus four. CNET's popped his ult as well. He's just waiting inside a small shower. He's just playing the patience game. As he peeks out, the timing is great, but Vac wins the duel. Three, four versus two, but the HP on Vac and Aaron is so low. You can barely touch them and they'll die. Now, it's not an ideal situation, though. Xiao whiffing the shot on the aggressive peak. It's a player thrown away. That Cypher utility that was in play to hold out middle control, no longer in effect for Null Panky, but they'll take that trade to put it into a 4v2. For FPX, getting back in is difficult, and you can see that they're actually worried about a flanker. It looks like they're just going to play for the exits at this point and saving these weapons forward to the next round. As we said, you know, this was where they could afford an investment, not so much in the next. So I think they've made the right call. Does Shadow swing? Does he look for these players as they retreat oh. over? The knives are coming through. <laughs> Count to four. You don't want to peek that. At most, he's got one left. So now he's happy to swing, grab a kill, yeah. and bail out. Look, it's not bad damage. Just a shame that Vac and Aaron didn't go down in that initial fight or it could have been a completely different round for FPX. Absolutely, and in a situation where you're like up 10-6, that's sometimes a really smart decision to make. You go for a few exit frags and possibly still manage to scrape together enough money to still have a decent buy the next round. Because if both of them lost uh, their weapons as well, most likely they would have to do some sort of eco here. It looks like we've got a pause coming through, but I did really enjoy while we're here in that previous round when we were looking at Jesmond. The whole team is rotating through the sewers. They are moving towards the A site, but Jesmond walked up in middle. He put a camera down in rope room, then cleared out that angle. So, okay, yeah. nobody here, so I can look at the left side. Sees the left, and they had smoked it themselves, so he knows nobody's there, clears the corner, and he puts down a tripwire, then rotates through to go into heaven. Now, Angel, unfortunately, had that perfect read on yeah, the timing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was so well done, so well read. But when it comes down to Jasmine's play, you can see the advantage that gives them in the late round. You know at that point nobody's rotated through mid unless they break the tripwire. Your camera is completely hidden. And when they come in, you're checking it every so often. You know now they cannot push from heaven. In fact, I imagine you would have seen them push into this, the defender's spawn to get a nice aggressive angle. And at that point, you basically narrow it down to just two choke points your opponents can push you from. That would have been better explained with the Telestrator. Maybe we can get the guys <laughs> to do it later. But it was a really interesting approach yeah, that, that we saw from them. Just a shame that Jasmine got headshot by Angel, so all that utility kind of went out the window. Yeah, and that's the thing. Now that the Cypher and Killjoy changes came in, as soon as Cypher is gone, all his utility is gone as well. So this is something to think of when you're a Cypher player. I need to play more safe, or I need to be confident that I get these pickoffs, or else I'm just destroying all the utility for my team as well. And it's definitely not worth it to get a trade if all his utility is lost, especially when you're defending here, you're trying to play time. And another thing I wanted to point out is that with the Cypher trips on this map, there are so many mind games involved. Because usually we've seen this time and time again now recently that it seems to be a meta shift on how teams play split because you used to have a lot more action happening in the middle area, especially on a defending team. Also because you always had a Sage. You always had a Sage playing middle. The wall was a lot better. And now they seem to just leave mid more open and give them more space. And just like that, we're actually back here in the game as a new round has started and both teams have a pretty solid economy here. FBX have been handling CNED really well uh, so far, but I want to see, there we Ooh. go, see clearing out the utility on the push forward, blast packs, they use cages to counteract the one way, everything about this is so smart from Null Panky, but they get punished, they actually end up losing the fight, at least initially, here comes a double rolling thunder, the return working out for Null Panky, oh CNED in with the first kill, the second kill, he's looking to come up and maybe double his kills by the end of this round, the swing by Meadow, got oh, catches one, I love this the flash on its way here's the swing oh. and the kill shadow on the spray down secures the spike at least for a moment but it goes back to a 2v2
Yeah, okay. now we have a two versus two, and the bomb is down. So this is unfortunate for the attack team. Arrow gets meta as well, but their HP is so low. Oh my god, Shadow, can you shoot them in the knee and they're finished? Oh my god, what is got Oh my god, I, I don't even know what to say. It's just, that was, what was that? That was, ladies and gentlemen, a Red Bull clutch. Anyway, so we have to address the fact that CNET currently has five kills. 15 deaths and three assists. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying, right? He got two kills, so he might actually double them. <laughs> and I think that well, we look in towards the defensive side when he had the operator, that's yeah. where CNET really shines. Yeah. Remember, he came into this team, VAC was pushed down to a separate agent. By that, I mean, well, he's had four or five agents that he's gone on to. He's <laughs> filling in for this team. He's still an insane individual. CNET is the one that took oping priority, which I completely agree with. He's a solid opper. Yeah. He's been caught off so many times by FPX's team pushes, especially on those low buy rounds. He's been caught off by the smokes they keep on pushing him off the angles that he's holding when they're yeah. defending so he's actually not had a chance to build Speaking up a lot of that, it's happening again see man he keeps getting killed by low buys and again it happens zipan out of there after finding the opening duel see having the worst game i've seen from him period regardless of the team we're talking about 11 to 7 fbx two away and with a two-man advantage flash from shadow could be devastating no penky oh it doesn't even matter that was a dry peek by zipan zipan even got got flashed by that but it doesn't matter oh he pops God. his ult goes through no Long damage done remain. but it doesn't matter because angel's there to swing confidence now oh. is the name of the game for fbx and with that confidence they get a prime gaming flawless round <laughs> They Match do indeed, point. sir. It's just... Oh, you gotta feel bad for CNET at this point, right? Because first 100%. of all, Split is not an easy map to play Operator on. And the pressure is on your shoulders, especially as it gets closer to the map finishing. You're getting a lot of... And, yeah. How many times have we seen that happen today? But it's down to timing. You see, that yeah. paranoia that they had was for a player being back in heaven, yeah. not for them being in that corner. It's unexpected because Zipan got there so early. The thing is, it's not CNET completely whiffing. It's Absolutely not. Like, not. It's, no, no, it's no. It's FPX are dealing with him so well, but CNET now, he says, to hell with you. I'm going to rush you down, show you how it feels. He's upgraded his weapon. He's pushed Meadow back oh. off the site. CNET controlling it, getting the advantage no for Null Panky. I'm I'm hoping we will see the CNED redemption story here. Hopefully, it's it's Angel's already taken out. The Queen Bee has been taken out. Let's see if the workers can still be able to push this retake. It's the final round here. They need to win every round from now on as the rest comes out. Suddenly, it's a 5v5 retake. Well, Shadow actually walls off behind just to be safe here. This is getting really interesting. It's a, it's a total five. A Shadow takes out Jesmon, actually. Oh my goodness. So with Jasmine dropped now, now Penky need to find the kills elsewhere. And Meadow exactly. and Shadow are making sure that doesn't happen. Meadow ready for the swing, but Shadow deals with it first. And it's all down to back. Oh, a 1v4 no. and a one way. He's, Meadow has put those one ways down every round and finally he gets the reward for it. 13 to seven as FBX closed this series out two to zero, which means sadly we must say goodbye to Null Panky. FBX, they've earned their right to be called the second best team in Europe. Maybe this is the time that they could go to first because they're already through to the semifinals. Yeah, and I mean, we saw so much beautiful play here. And of course, you have to address so much individual powerful performances, but that's not what I want to highlight. I just, I they play beautifully as a team. It's such a well-oiled machinery. It's just always someone, it must feel so good to play together for these guys because it seems like they always have each other's backs. They play this buddy system, they hold these angles, and it just seems seems to be like you can't pick off a player from FBX unless you're going to get traded back. And that's just, it's just beautiful. It's fundamental. It's exactly how this game was supposed to be played. Yeah. And for FBX, we know as a team and as individuals, they've got what it takes to be at the top Absolutely. of the food chain. I really enjoyed watching this game. Yeah. And I have to say, my, my heart goes out to Null Panky, man. Absolutely. Because they played so well. Yeah, they, they did. really stuck it to FBX, who right now are on form. They've been hiding strats. Oh, yeah. They've been messing around in these BO1 tournaments to prepare for BO1 qualifiers. And so far, they're not dropping a map. They're going oh. clean all the way through to the semis. Yeah, I mean, what, what we can say is that we're going to see more exciting stuff from FBX, and they are on fire.
they are ready to show why they deserve to be one of the best teams, maybe the best team in Europe. Hopefully we'll find out soon. Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? <laughs> the, thing, the thing for me, right, and the, the thing that excites me is the fact that we did not see FPX ban Icebox in this series. Now, they didn't get oh. a chance to, but if they have something prepared there, they yeah. can potentially catch some other teams off guard. The way the system works from what I've deduced and when we're given the, the bans and picks is that the first team bans, the second team bans and then picks. Yeah. So if you float Icebox and FPX are the second team, you could be coming straight into that map against them. Oh. I wouldn't risk it with a brain, not only, so we've actually given a lot of shout outs to Angel and yeah. said he's got the big brain and he absolutely has. But then of course they've got Jonta there with them. They've got Doom Bros as well, who's been yeah. with them for absolutely. such a long time. The analyst, the coach, these guys have put in so much work behind the scenes and you can see it right here paying off. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's just like a computer. You have a CPU, but you need a graphics card as well. You need the RAM, you need the storage space. So I, you know what, I'm just gonna stop with the analogies and. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I think that's a good call. We're gonna stop with everything. Caster, stop talk. Analyst, start because we're gonna be going over to the analyst desk for the post show. Thank you very much, Mitch and Jonas. You know, you gave that computer analogy, and I like to think that Angel's brain is probably bigger than a computer, than a PC's brain. Um, and you guys also mentioned that they're sort of in contention right now for one of the best teams in Europe. After that performance, where would you place them? You know, we've already seen G2 play, uh, and I think they would be the obvious other first place in Europe right now. Well, I would put them in the top for sure. Uh, you know, some of them see show, shown real promise today. Uh, I don't think they are yet when it comes to like the point of personal skill level, which FPX is re representing right now. Uh, but when it comes to the team play, I, I would say they are actually up to it. So from Plus Phoenix for me right now, one of the top teams probably contender for winning the tournament. But I see on the other side of the bracket, we have, you know, Salmon NFC and G2 and both of them can actually take it, I feel, I feel like. Mm. Is that what you would agree with as well, Hypog? Or um, are they a bit higher on your estimation? To an extent, yeah. I mean, you've got to compare Nolpenki more so to G2, that fast and loose play style, you know, relying heavily on, you know, maybe one or two people popping off. Uh, I mean, obviously, the notable thing there is Scenic struggled and it showed for the team. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this mm. back in the green room. Um, and really, there was there was a couple of other players that did step, step up. I mean, Zeke statistically didn't have a bad series there, but... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, it actually goes a bit deeper than that. And FBX, their setup is much better. Both sides of the coin, you know, Angel, mechanically, absolute god. Um, and then, you know, he's also praised as being the brainiac behind that team as well. Uh, just, again, I keep using this word today, but discipline. Um, that there was a perfect example of a difference between two teams being very disciplined and Noel Penke showing absolutely none. Although I have to say, like it's kind of hard to judge FPX after this match. Yes. Because yeah, I feel fair. like it was more of no Penky not showing up yeah. than FPX showing up and just wrecking them. You know, the results are like maps were maybe not that close, right? Especially on split. But I felt most of the runs rounds won by by FPX were just oh we'll just exploit the mistakes that well, no Penky are doing. It's like Angel walked up mid like five times and found a kill. And mm -hmm. every single time he had one or two people literally like stuck to him like glue. Uh, they get access to B Heaven, they execute, they explode onto, onto B site. And it was it was so simple to watch it. I mean, it was great to watch because Angel's he, he did it with a Sheriff, the Vandal like three or four times. Um, but you're absolutely right. There, there was there was no response to that. There was there was no response in mid from Noel Penke playing an agent composition that was based around Jet and Rays. You know, it's, um, a, oh, it's just strange. Now go on. It's it's a, a stark contrast to yep. let's say the split map that they played in the qualifiers, the last map uh, against exactly, Enterprise, exactly. where No Penky had a two v five successful post plant when they had to kill five people. Aaron and Cena actually showed up and just killed the entire Enterprise. But that was allowed because everyone from Enterprise was peaking alone, and they were just you know kind of just getting one of you one fights. Here, FPX, I don't think there were many situations when they killed someone from L FPX and there was no one next to that person yes, to get exactly. a trade. So this is this is what you mentioned, the discipline, the discipline that the players are next to each other. They know they have to cover their, their own tracks, let's say like that. So no one is getting just uh, left out Absolutely. and being alone on, on the map. So mm. this is, uh, I, I think that was the instrumental thing and very basic foundation uh, that every team should have 
to secure a uh, secure one map. Mm. I do want to focus on some positives, though, because they were going up against FPX. You know, the results uh, and, and the rounds they managed to win, I think they deserve praise for that. Not many teams can show up and do what they did to FPX today. I know you said, like, they're not as organized, they're not as well drilled. I think that's something you probably would expect uh, from Nopenki. But let's talk about some of the good things they did and, and how you guys feel in terms of this team going forward. How much potential do they have going into 2021? Please. There's not a lot of positives <laughs> for me. Uh, I'm sorry. It, it, that That's not the standard at which I'm used to seeing Nopenki play. Um, okay. Again, that's a lot of that's around scene edit. Statistically, he's always good. Um, like I said, that's, that's, that split map just really stands out to me. Um, again, Vat coming onto the, the breach, um, and obviously still having the, the raise on, on the side of Zeke. Uh, there just there wasn't as much of an effort to kind of utilize any. I mean, it comes back to that play I was, uh, I was watching one of their eco rounds when three oh, of them yeah. one by one walked into the same smoke. Yeah, um, yeah. And this is a team that's renowned for, you know, being aggressive with the jet, aggressive with the raise, uh, and kind of having that synergy based around that that fragging ability of the team. I mean, we saw on Bind how many times they were able to exploit the fact FPX had, had such a heavy reliance on that structure, the heavy reliance on all the utility they were going to use to slow down these pushes. Vac and CNED were just bursting off the sides. No, and we didn't see that at all on Split. Now when I think about it, maybe it's also a factor that teams actually learned how to deal with a jet who's playing an operator while being aggressive. Yes. Because if you keep a close, um, close quarters on her, she doesn't really get much, right? And we have seen seen that not really have any situation. The ramp well, walk up. Yeah, he just <laughs> woke up the ramp, walked up up the ramp and died to a specter. So that was like 6K down the drain. But the dry all, peak as yeah. well. You've got Breach stood yeah. 10 feet away from you and it's a dry peak again, walk peaking, uh, walking up ramp. Uh, stuff like that just... It's frustrating to see because we've seen Nolpenki be so good mm -hmm. in that play style previously. Maybe they just play off confidence, you know? They need that... They need the push yeah, it definitely could be that. to perform well. It's something that maybe they need to work on the fundamentals on, on, on just having to get that synergy between the players, you know, or getting a more um, more comprehensive playbook to yes. follow. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I do question if perhaps they respected FBX a little bit too much. I think there's maybe a fear yeah. factor there. There, there, there. there definitely could be a fear factor there. You're absolutely right. Mm. Well, and, and, you know, it's not easy when you have to go up against Angel. Uh, that's not something that I would want to do. And speaking of Angel, uh, we have our results from the HyperX Player of the Series poll. Of course, Shocker. it went to Angel. It had to go to Angel. I don't know, like, the voting um, ratios, but I will be very surprised if it isn't 100% Angel. Uh, I do want to sort of raise the, the point of Angel and also, by extension, uh, some of the other players in the tournament, uh, as you guys can see. I mean, I feel like today's series is just an Angel frag movie. Uh, like, Pretty round much. after yeah. round after round, he's got so much confidence. He leads by example. And I don't think there's anything that's going to be more powerful when you're the IGL and you're the person calling the shots, but you can also go up there and do this, these things. Well, you, again, nail on the head with that terminology, <laughs> leading from the front. And uh, that's something we see Angel do time and time again. He's his first contact, he's pushing in, he's opening up areas of the map. And again, like I said, you know, he's, he's, he's got these boys well trained, you know, Zipan, more often than not stuck to him like glue, showers well. And these are also players that you, you can't talk down. They're insane as well. So if, if that's the person trading you as first contact, it's got to be such a uh, such an awesome feeling. Mm, I really want to get your take as well, Lotha. But we do have Angel here for an interview and nobody keeps Angel waiting. Please, please so, ask uh, him why, does he in, why doesn't he use Viper and Split? Okay, I will ask that question. Thank you, thank you. I will ask that question first, in fact. Hi, Angel, congratulations on making the Hello. semifinals. Oh. I'm not sure if you heard Lothar's point just now, but he wanted me to ask you, why are you not playing Viper on Split? Mm, first of all, yeah, hello. Do you hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you. Nice. So, uh, basically, the way I want to use Viper for this tournament is as a main uh, smoker. Right. And mm -hmm. on split, it's impossible. We tried it, we played it, maybe even a few pracks with it, but it's impossible to play it without some extra smokes, extra utility. Yeah? And that's why. <laughs> Well, I hope Aloth is going to be happy with that answer. We'll discuss that later. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you guys have had a couple of weeks now to prepare more for this tournament. What have you been up to? Uh, everybody's always very excited uh, on the preparation phase of FPX because you guys play with such um, discipline and you're always so organized in your game. 
Um, we wasn't creating something completely new for the finals. We just tried to make our best comps and to play it like the best possible way we can. Yeah, there is like some small uh, tactical like changes in our picks, yeah, all over the maps, but it's nothing super special. Like I'm not coming for this tournament to just like bring some fun into it. I'm coming in here to win. <laughs> I love that. Um, you, of course, were the winner of our HyperX Player of the Series. You had an incredible two maps today. How would you rate your own performance? Yeah, it was okay. I didn't feel like I was like overperforming and killing everyone all the way. I had like some problems on bind, same as Shao, like on both maps. Maybe it helped me that Shao was lagging and like all the frags went to me. <laughs> I think you are downplaying it. Uh, like I said on the desk earlier, it was pretty much an angel frag movie we saw um, today. Um, you mentioned Shao, you know, you are a team that have a lot of players that can frag out. Shao, yourself, Zipan, uh, and, and Shadow and Meadow as well when they need to step up. Is this something that you specifically draw into these players to make sure that they can step up if, they need, if they're needed to? Or do they have maybe more cut out roles they have to fulfill? Uh, first of all, every player has their own role. It depends on the round, on setup, on like the goal for the round, yeah? And I care much more about them filling the roles they want than about fragging. Fragging is like just like they're showing their best uh, place, you know? It's like up to, like all credit goes to the players because of fragging. My goal is not to make them frag. Mm. I mean, you don't have to make them frag, but they still do frag. Um, I just also wanted to ask you about No Penky. Uh, they put on a pretty good performance, I think, today. They pushed you a little bit. What did you make of their performance? They played really well. Let, let's be honest. They played really well. Like, their aggressive jet and raise stuff was pretty hard to deal with. Yeah. But the same moment, I would say, we would we didn't play like 100% we can show on this tournament. Yeah, right. This, in this game. And I hope we're gonna like just fix the little details, like maybe be more confident in some space, like in some spots uh, for the next game. And we're gonna be more like we're gonna play much better. Mm. Well, speaking of the next game, it will be against Summon FC. Uh, Mystic has called you out on Twitter about your Viper. Booster earlier in his interview also called you out. I'm not sure if you saw it, but how would you like to respond to these boys who are super keen to play play you and also beat you as well? I think they're a really, really good team. I like the way they stole our Viper idea on Bind. <laughs> it means I have I have to watch at least some, you know, before I had to create everything on Viper by myself, but now I can watch some games. It seems like Viper appears more and more often, at least on this map, right? And I think it's going to be a really nice game tomorrow. I'm looking at it like this. Perfect. Thank you so much, Angel. We are looking forward to it as well. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angel. Well, Lothar, you got your answer. They tried it. Of course, they are FPX. They're going to try everything. And he says it doesn't work. Are you satisfied with that answer? Well, I would love to see it anyway. But I feel like he might have a point, especially since on A side, when you attack, uh, sorry, when, you def when you're on the defensive, uh, defensive side, you hold just one angle, but then you don't have that much power to just make a retake, so I can see that point. In attack, I feel like it's enough uh, to have only Viper, but maybe, yeah, I can see his point. So it's actually interesting to see a perspective of a pro player and IGL, because that gives you a lot of context, which we didn't have before. Right? But I'm happy to hear that they actually tried it out. <laughs> well, Hypog, you know, Angel also said that he doesn't tell his players to frag. That's not a priority. Uh, he just tells them to do their jobs. And he even, well, I think he was being super humble about his oh, own but, performance. Yeah. Um, I mean, what did you make of that point then, that he, that the way he approaches this is not telling the likes of Zipan and Shao to, to just go kill? Uh, I, I mean, I think that's important. Uh, one thing I will say, yeah, it absolutely comes across as humble if, if that's him kind of not putting on a special performance in his eyes. Um, <laughs> again, you know, he said we've got to fix some confidence issues. I want to see Angel walk more confidently <laughs> up mid on yeah. split than he did on that because that'll be a sight to see. Uh, but no, I mean, he's, he's talking about the things I've, I've leaned on heavily today, the structure, the discipline, things like that. Um, and, you know, even though that was a very good demonstration of, of those things, he's still talking about fixing those minor details then and drilling a bit further down into that. Um, and that's ultimately what you want to hear from an IGL that, that, that's kind of like, yeah, we did good, but we're not 100% yet. This is the winner's mindset, right? Exactly, exactly. Like
We many, won, but we're still going to improve. Exactly. Like every time you die in a round, you need to analyze what did I do wrong, what could I done better. Even if you win a round, there's so Valorant is a very co uh, competitive and complicated game at the same time. So you can work on your uh, actions, mistakes, and learn from all of them. And that's a winner's mindset that I, I like really in pro players. And then not every single one of them has that mindset. Yes. Some people are just done playing it. Oh, I got unlucky, or I got lucky. Especially when there's a player interview. I love how they're saying, oh, hey, how did you do in this game? How did you win it? Oh, just got lucky. I was like, eh, that's probably <laughs> not the right approach. That will run out eventually. Yeah. Um, but I, one thing I did like is, is actually, you know, he's, he's paying a little credit to Summon FC as well. Um, so that, that is good to see, and whether or not we do see him switch up the ways of running the Viper as the solo smoker, so to say, um, whether or not you think Summon FC's approach was better. Mm, well, Boaster did say that he makes these strats just so Angel can steal them. <laughs> um, so I'm seeing a little very nice, friendly rivalry yeah, yeah. Uh, going on at Lothar. There's, there was one wall used by Mystic that impressed me like so ma I was so mad I didn't <laughs> think of it myself, you know, when I saw that viper uh, viper wall on attack, and I was um, I, I was like watching closely if Angel is using the same one, but he was actually using it from the other side of the map mm -hmm. to a different extent. So it's it, I seen them make the same idea, but from a different context and mm -hmm. on a different side of the map, which is very interesting to see the difference in approach from both Angel and Mystic. But I have to say, Mystic impressed me more mm. with the Viper. Ooh. Well, uh, speaking of Mystic and speaking of his Viper, we do have our Prime Gaming Play of the Day. And would you look at that? It is Mystic's Viper. Uh, we have to talk about this triple kill pistol round, you guys. Yeah, I mean, this this is. I saw a comment uh, earlier on, on Reddit. This looks like something out of my ranked games, and it, it really does. Uh, other than the fact that, you know, the Mystic is actually putting in work on Viper, but this is just such a fantastic setup. And there, with the slow mo, you can see just how well Boaster complements this play. Um, obviously, with the one way going down and the flash timed at the same time, anybody pinched in front of that, even though the jet can tailwind away, I mean, it's just game over at that point. You won the round in, what, three seconds? It's kind of silly that someone just pushes that, you know? <laughs> I, said, I said this, it was, it was frustrating as well after that. For three rounds, they kind of still fed into yeah. that setup. Yeah. It was like, yeah. dude, they've got you set up on a short. Don't go there unless you've got a decent plan to counter it. And a, a, a fun fact, when someone has a setup like that with the, with the orb, and with two snake, bite, snake bites in, he can hold that angle for full 50 seconds without anyone going yes. through. Because you can time out, uh, time perfectly the fuel, then the snake bite, mm -hmm. the fuel recharges, you put up the one way, and then you put another snake bite. So for 50 seconds, no one can breach that angle that you're guarding. Mm. I mean, I'd be very interested to see how the matchup goes tomorrow. Of course, Summon FC will be taking on F. X and G2 Esports will be playing Heretics. I honestly feel like it, it feels like so long ago that we saw G2 and Heretics because so much has happened. Um, but yeah, so the G2 and Heretics game will be coming up first, followed by Summon and FBX. You guys, which one are you more excited for? I mean, after today, I, that masterclass has, has kind of got me set up. I, I want to see some some more geekiness. Um, I do want to see the Viper diff with uh, Summon FC and FPX. Imagine um, buying with two <laughs> Vipers, right? Dude, um, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be it's going to be absolute chaos. But uh, yeah, that's that's probably the one I'm looking forward to more. But nothing to take away from Heretics. Um, obviously, they they caused the game one upset. Um, I do think that series between G2 is is going to be a little closer than some people may expect. Um, I don't think it was too much of a surprise that Heretics actually. Um, toppled liquid, so to say. Lotho, what about you? Which one are you lo most looking forward to? Because of the Vipers, I'm looking forward to Summon <laughs> and FPX, you know, and uh, today we had Fun Plus Phoenix, but tomorrow it might be Set Plus Phoenix. You know, oh. <laughs> maybe they get even, who knows? Honestly, if I would have to put a winner on both of those matches, it's pretty tough. Mm. Like, mm. it's not, oh, G2 is going to win it. I don't think G2 will roll Heretics. Times. I, I really don't think G2 are going to roll over Heretics. So it's going to be close matchups. We're probably going to go to six maps tomorrow. I completely agree with you guys. And this is why I love the European Valorant scene right now. Because had you told me, you know, three weeks ago coming into this, that the two people I'm sitting on a desk with will be looking forward to 
uh, the Summon FC game more than the G2 Heretics <laughs> game. I would not believe you, but you know, this is why we're here. Uh, we are here to find a winner. And just because they're unsigned doesn't mean they don't have a chance to win. But that is all we have now today. And congratulations once again to Summon FC and FPX. And of course, G2 and Heretics, our semi-finalists, they will be back tomorrow to see which two teams will book their place in the grand finals. Until then, have fun, everyone.